Welcome to a new series, Signers of the U.S. Constitution. First, we're learning about George Washington, and as you can see, I have up here the XKCD thing on how far can George Washington throw things. Um, today, uh, well, Washington, let's start with his early life. He was born on February 22nd, 1732, hence the video coming out on his birthday, as we're going to do with all the Constitution signers, because I think we know all of their birthdays. But, we'll see. Um, growing up, he was act born as a British subject. Washington led the Continental Army to American independence. And probably his most famous moment from the Revolution was cro his crossing of the Delaware, as portrayed here. And as this is also our U.S. President series, this is actually James Monroe. But here's Washington. And while I'm on the Wikipedia page, this is what he looked like. And uh, let me pull up his signature. There we go. This is a copy from the one on the Constitution. Washington. Um, actually, I don't know what this one looked like. The, the Oh, yeah. Um... Washington went on to be elected America's first president, but not before joining the Constitutional Convention and signing the Constitution. His signature was the first one on there. So. And was the presiding officer during it, during the Constitutional Convention. As you can see here, here is General Washington. Washington then went on to be elected America's first president after a, a retirement at Mount Vernon. And he won it unanimously twice. He actually took his first oath of office at Federal Hall in New York City. As president, Washington um, biggest achievement in my mind was just being president and showing and was the model for all future U.S. presidents. I think his biggest um, mistake was the Whiskey Rebellion, which um, was caused by Washington's whiskey tax. And I have here, and I'm going to read a copy of his first or second inaugural address. Let me pull it up. It is the shortest one in history. William Henry Harrison's was the longest. But it's just 135 words. This is his second inaugural address. Fellow citizens, I am again called upon the voice, or upon, again called upon by the voice of my, I'm going to restart. Fellow citizens, I am again called upon by the voice of my country to execute the f functions of its chief magistrate. When the occasion proper for it shall arrive, I shall endeavor to express the high sense I entertain of this distinguished honor and of confidence which has been reposed in me by the people of United America. Pre Previous to the execution of any official act, a president of the Constitution requires an oath of office. This oath I am now about to take and in your presence, that if it shall be found during my administration of the government, I have in any instance violated willingly or knowingly the injunctions thereof, I may be subject to the upbraidings of all who are now in witness of the present solemn ceremony. Following retirement, Washington uh, returned to his home at Mount Vernon, where he died on December 14th, 1799, at the age of 67. Now, Washington, this is just a bonus thing, Washington is one of two presidential tombs that I have actually seen. I can pull up the picture of that here. 
Okay. He is buried at his home in Mount Vernon, Virginia. And, well, just an interesting fact about him. Being known as the father of his country, he actually never fathered any children by himself, which takes me into his family life because his parents were Augustine Washington and Mary Ball. His wife was Martha Dandridge Custis. And she did have two, four children, actually, but two of them died young. Their children were Martha and John. Both John and Martha um, predeceased Washington. And... Their entire family is at the Mount Vernon uh, Old Crypt. Um, Washington did ha have several step-grandchildren but via John Park Custis. Um, mo most notably include Elizabeth Law, Martha Peter, Eleanor Lewis, and George Washington Custis. George Washington Custis is the only grandchild, I believe, to be buried at Arlington National Cemetery. And he had two, five or six children, most notably Maria and Mary. Maria had a child named William Sifax. And... He was the great-great-grandson of Martha Washington. Following that, the Washington line died there. Going through the ancestors of Washington, his father, or his mother, Mary, Her parents were Joseph Ball and Mary Montague, and Joseph Ball's parents were William Ball and Hannah Atherwald. Through George Washington's father, and I just want to note one thing real quick, that we are going to be going over ancestors and descendants and the whole presidential families um, uh, in these presidential episodes. Anyway, Washington's father was Augustine Washington, and his parents were Mildred Warner, and her father was Augustine Warner, and his father was Augustine Warner Sr., and I believe that's as far back as we can go with his or no. His parents were Thomas Warner and Elizabeth Southerton, but I don't have any further ancestors of George Washington. And, uh, but, uh, through, uh, Washington's paternal grandfather, Lawrence, um, John Washington and Ann Pope were his parents, and then John Washington Sr. was John Washington. His dad was also another Lawrence Washington. And the Washington family coat of arms is actually based on the Washington, D.C. flag. Washington, D.C. is in turn named after President Washington. Here's the Washington coat of arms. Washington also has a U.S. state named in his honor. And that is basically George Washington. Thank you for watching. Please remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you're still here, 
I figured I would give you a recipe for Washington's favorite food, cornmeal pancakes. Um, just let me pull that up now. So, cornmeal pancakes, there, oh wait, 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 I want to do something else about Washington now, as I actually forgot to mention this, well I didn't forget, but I figured I would tell you. Washington's birthday was a federal holiday for a long time. There are 30 counties named after Washington and Washington College in Maryland. Now, the other thing I want to mention before we get to the recipe is the Washington Monument in D.C. If I can grab my phone. I've actually been to this place, and I will have something cool. Notice the color difference here. That's because construction was halted for about 30 years. Now let's get to Washington's recipe. Has a half a teaspoon of active dry yeast, two and a half cups of white cornmeal divided, three to four cups of lukewarm water, half a teaspoon of salt, one large egg lightly beaten, melted bu butter for drizzling and serving, honey or maple syrup for serving. First instruction, mix the yeast in one and a quarter cups of the cornmeal in a large bowl. Add one cup of the lukewarm water, stirring to combine thoroughly. Mix in half a cup more of the water if needed, give the mix to, if needed to give the mixture the consistency of pancake batter. Cover with plastic wrap and refrigerate for at least eight hours or overnight. Second step is to preheat the oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Third, when ready to finish the pancakes, begin by adding one and a half or one half to one cup of the remaining water to the batter. Stir in the salt and the egg, blending thoroughly. Fourth, gradually add the remaining one and a quarter cups of cornmeal, alternating with enough additional lukewarm water to make a, a mixture that is consistent that is the consistency of waffle batter. Cover with a towel and set aside at room temperature for fifteen to twenty minutes. Fifth, while the batter is setting aside. Heat a griddle on medium-high heat and lightly grease it with lard or vegetable shortening. Prepare, preparing one pancake at a time, drop a scant quarter cup of the batter onto the griddle and cook on one side for about five minutes or until lightly browned. With a spatula, turn the pancake over and continue cooking for another four to five minutes until browned. Six, place the pancake on a platter and set it in the oven to keep warm while making the rest of the batch. Dr dr drizzle each batch with melted butter. 7. Serve the pancake swarm drizzled with mel melted butter dr drizzled with melted butter and honey or maple syrup. Now thank you all for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe.